Venturing into a world beyond comprehension, NBA star Dennis Rodman embarked on an unconventional mission to North Korea in 2013. Known more for his basketball prowess than diplomacy, he found himself amidst international relations, acting as, as an unlikely intermediary between a global superpower and an enigmatic dictatorship. Alongside Vice Media Ryan Duffy, Rodman's journey was aimed at hosting basketball exhibitions in the world's most secluded nation. What marked this trip's significance, Rodman's unexpected encounter with North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, making him one of the first Americans Americans to do so. This bizarre meeting sparked a string of surprises, with Rodman going as far as calling Kim a friend life. Thus began Rodman's controversial and somewhat comical liaison with North Korea. As the world watched in disbelief, Rodman's involvement with North Korea deepened. The basketball legend was not just content with building friendships, he wanted to break the ice between hostile nations. In his own words, he questioned why the task had fallen to him, Dennis Rodman, of all people. Yet he embraced it, planning to train the North Korean national basketball team, a testament to his commitment. Rodman's vision did not stop there. He took it upon himself to open the minds of others, including then-President Obama, encouraging him to reach out to Kim Jong-un. Perhaps the most audacious move in this unorthodox diplomacy was his announcement to visit North Korea once again, but this time, he was not going alone. He intended to bring with him a retinue of former NBA players, aiming to further bridge the gap through the universal language of sports. Against all odds, Rodman was becoming an unlikely bridge between the US and North Korea, but with great visibility comes great scrutiny, and Rodman's involvement with North Korea was not without controversy. In the midst of his diplomatic endeavors, Rodman found himself under fire when he insinuated that Kenneth Bae, an American prisoner in North Korea, was to blame for his own imprisonment. His remarks, made during a CNN interview, sparked a storm of criticism. Feeling the pressure, Rodman, a few days later, expressed regret for his comments, admitting that he had been under the influence and should have known better than to make political statements. The backlash didn't end there. High-profile figures from Congress, the NBA, and various human rights groups voiced their concerns. They suggested that Rodman was being manipulated, turned into a public relations tool for the North Korean government. His mission of peace had seemingly become a platform for propaganda. Rodman's involvement with North Korea was a double-edged sword, bringing both condemnation and unexpected results. In a twist of fate, Rodman's controversial involvement with North Korea had some unintended consequences. The basketball diplomat, without even realizing it, played a role in the early release of Kenneth Bae, an American prisoner in North Korea. Bae credited Rodman for raising international awareness about his case, which he believes expedited his release. But the saga didn't end there. In mid-June of 2017, Rodman returned to North Korea. This time, he claimed, it was purely a sports-related visit. He met with National Olympic athletes and basketball players, once again demonstrating his unique ability to bridge gaps through the universal language of sports. However, his actions continued to stir controversy and raise eyebrows worldwide. Was this just another publicity stunt, or was Rodman genuinely trying to foster a positive relationship between the United States and North Korea through his love of basketball? In a world of uncertainty, one thing remains clear. Dennis Rodman's involvement with North Korea is a tale as unpredictable as the man himself.